everyone, Henry from Smoky Hills, and I'm here at the shop in Park Rapids with Jake. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for helping us out, Jake. So, one of the things that we get asked about a lot is maintenance. Yep. Kind of maintenance, and what do I need to do before I go out on my first trip, and all kinds of different things. And maybe we can take a little bit of time to and start with what do I want to do before I go out on every trip? Sure, that's very important. You know, you got to make sure that. Before you're ready to go, uh, you don't want to have issues when you're 200 miles away from home up on Red Lake or something. So, um, Ice Castle gives us a really nice checklist. It's right by the door. Um, if you want to take a look at that. So, check the tires. That's pretty easy. You know, you want to make sure your tires are properly inflated. Why do you want to do that, Jack? Um, because if your tires aren't properly inflated, uh, you, you can have a blowout if they're really low, of course. Um, and if they're just they're low, it's going to wear the tire. You won't get, you know, I see. 10 year old houses come in that the tires still look like new if you take care of them. So, um, Your lug nuts need to be torqued at 100 pounds. Go to the store, buy a torque wrench if you don't have one. Um, you don't just want to make sure they feel tight. You want to get a torque wrench, torque them to 100 pounds every time you go out. You know These houses go through extreme heat and cold and uh, the, the wheels can flex and you just want to make sure those lug nuts are nice and tight. So you don't want to guess it, you want to get a torque wrench. Exactly. It's, it's no fun uh, you know, guessing it if you're on the side of the road 200 yeah. miles away from home. So, Check for cable tension. This is probably one of the most important ones. Um, if you want to look here, Darian, I'll show you what I mean. So you should be able to grab your cable and wiggle it around if you've got a cable-operated house. Um, what you don't want is your cables to be tight like that. Now, why, what, what's going to happen if my cables are tight? Sure. So, if your cables are tight, you can see there's tension on this bar now, but not on this bar. And this bar is actually your suspension for the fish house. So, if your cables are tight, um, it can snap the cable, because the whole weight of the house is riding on your cables now. Um, it's going to be a rough ride for the fish house. It can even, uh, in some cases, can bend the frame of the fish so, house. So, really, there's no suspension when you're doing that? Exactly. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, no, it's hard on the fish house. So. And then I see the last item on here is lock, lock the deadbolt before traveling. Why do we want to lock the deadbolt? Sure, so as with anything going down the road, um, you've got a lot of flex in the fish house. Um, you know, whether you have an RV door like this or a standard fish house door, um, if you lock the deadbolt, that will just prevent the door from possibly swinging open if you've got a lot of flex going on. Okay, so that's some of the stuff I want to definitely check before I go. Now, a lot of people, what I always recommend as well is, is make sure you run your furnace before you leave or your AC unit so you know it's working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you get out on the lake, you don't uh, maybe have a problem with your propane tanks or something like that. So it's always a good idea to run your furnace before you leave. Exactly. I mean, you don't want your weekend to be ruined because you didn't check something. So. Absolutely right. So, next one. Um, before the season starts or when the season is done, uh, one of the big questions we have is usually greasing the house. Yep. Now, if, there's two different frames. Correct. You want to show us a little bit how do I identify which frame I have? Sure. And then uh, which ones do I need to do what with? Okay. So, as far as 8x16 and 8x17 houses, they change the frames about the turn of this year. So, right when, right about December, January, um, we change the frame. Now, just a little bit, not a huge amount, but if you get in closer, Darren, I'll show you. The first change that they did. See, this is an older style frame, about two years old. You've got a grease circ on the end of your axle stub. Um, and you've got to make sure you get that greased. Uh, that just allows the house to move freely up and down. Um, and then over here you'll see your pulleys, no grease circs on either of them. Um, look behind you. We've got grease circs on the pulleys, which is great because I had a lot of issues with the pulleys freezing up on the older houses. And... No grease circ on the end of the axle stub. So why is there no grease circ on this one? Um, they actually, it's an upgrade. They did a carbon fiber bushing inside that's pre-greased. Um, it's going to well outlast the rest of the house by far. So a lot of people forgot that grease circ. Most people didn't even know it was there. Sure. So now you don't have to worry about it if you've got a new house at okay. 2016. Sure. If I, if I have one of these style frames with the grease circ there, I definitely want to grease that. Definitely. Uh, at least before even every season, you would say? Yeah, every turn of the season. So. Okay, that's great news. Now, let's see, uh, you said there's a couple more up front, right? Let's take a peek at those. Yeah, there is. So, we're looking at a new house here. It was made in May of 2016. Um, and you've got a grease circ on your pulley. And you've got a grease circ on your jack. Now, all houses will have this, 
a grease circ on your jack, regardless of how old it is. Um, I know this is one of those that everybody forgets about. Everybody and then misses, this breaks off. Everybody misses the jack, and then they can't get their house up on their truck ready for the weekend. So, okay. Um, another thing that they changed about a year and a half ago, they went to stainless steel cable, which is great. You know, you're not going to have an issue with the cable. However, your winch is still steel. You know, it's always going to be steel. So it's important to spray that down. We use a penetrating oil here in the shop, but you want to spray your winch down. You know, all your gears, turn it a few times. Uh, make sure it's running smooth, because if your winch isn't running smooth, you're not going to be able to sit down on the ice and get those fish. Sure. And then I see this grease in here as well. Why is that? Sure. So your hose obviously slides up into this pivot, and uh, your pin goes through there. Now, if that isn't greased, it's going to scrape every time, and you're going to scrape the coating off of your frame. Um, so we want a good coating of grease. You can see there, it's a brand new house. It's got new grease on it. Um, and you want to have good grease on that. Check your house every year. Make sure that's nice and lubed up still. Okay, and then uh, I know the last one you mentioned, you see this a lot in the shop, and it's easily prevented awning. Yep, I see a lot of awnings, you know, on nice houses get ruined because people will put them away wet. You know, if you're out camping, if it's pouring rain when you're putting away your awning, make sure that next sunny day you get, you open up your awning as far as you can, and you let it let that sun dry it out all day. Um, you put that awning away wet, it's gonna, mold's gonna grow in there, it's gonna wreck the fabric in your awning, and uh, lower the value of your house if you ever want to trade it in. So. And uh, we did have a question from one of our customers, and that yep. was, how do I store my house for the season? Sure. Yep, I get this question a lot. Um, do I store it up? Do I store it down? What do I do with it? So, <clears throat> what I tell my customers is, I tell them you want to store it down, but you want to store it on blocks, so it's not soaking up the moisture of the ground. Um, and I, they ask me where to block it. I tell them everywhere the frame takes a turn. So, here, front of the V, where it turns for your wheel wells, you know, basically everywhere your frame takes a turn, you want to support that frame when it's sitting for a long period of time. So you really want to do probably seven or eight blocks roughly from yep. counting it and, and, and store it on the blocks. Exactly. And also keep it from damaging. Yep. Okay, thank you. Awesome, some great tips. Uh, thank you very much, Jake. Yep. And as always, if you have questions for Jake, send us a message on Facebook or go to our YouTube channel and go subscribe so you can see these videos first. <clears throat> Share them with your friends. So you can have a fun and safe uh, uh, trip next time. Yep. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.